Hello, I'm Rabbi Elton from the Great Synagogue in Sydney, and our personality today is Martin Buber, born in 1878 and dies in 1965. Martin Buber was a scholar, a philosopher, a theologian, the creator of the concept of I and Thou. He was born into an Orthodox family in Vienna, but he himself departed from a strictly Orthodox lifestyle and became a Zionist at an early age. He lived in Palestine from 1938, obviously under pressure from the Nazi regime, and was a professor at the Hebrew University. He became an advocate of the concept of binationalism, whereby Jews and Arabs would live together in a state which was equally Jewish and Arab. This did not gain favour in the Zionist movement, but was nevertheless something which he passionately uh, campaigned for and argued for for his entire career when he was settled in both pre-state and uh, post-1948 Palestine, the State of Israel. His most famous contribution to study in Europe was twofold. First, a translation of the Bible into German, which he composed in collaboration with the great philosopher Franz Rosenzweig, and second of all, a compilation of tales of the Hasidim. The Hasidim, those who follow Hasidut, were not taken seriously in theological terms in a Western context, uh, but he saw a great wisdom and depth and meaning in the tales, the stories which the Hasidim told, and in fact he identified the stories as much as any theological text as the place you would find the true meaning of Hasidut. And so he translated into German and published several volumes of the tales of the Hasidim, which he now published in several languages. Unfortunately, he edited some of them, so we cannot tell from Buber's own editions what are the authentic original uh, stories they have gone through the uh, filter that Buber has imposed upon them. His great philosophical contribution was, as I say, this concept of I and thou. He said there are two possible types of relationship in the world, I-thou and I-it. The I-thou relationship takes a person with whom the encounter takes place at their full value and uh, complete self. We do not try to impose any objectifying analysis upon them. We have simply encountered them, we simply meet them. They are allowed to meet us in their full selves. And that is the truest and best form of relationship which we always strive to achieve. Uh, this is possible even uh, in relationship with God. It's difficult to know exactly what Buber thought about God, but he did believe that if one opened oneself to an I-thou relationship with God, then he would meet that person. He cannot be forced into that relationship. In fact, no one can be forced into an I-thou relationship because they must come with their full and willing selves. But if a person opens himself to an encounter with God, God will meet them in that encounter. The alternative is I-it. I, it is a way of objectifying a person, of uh, looking at them and analysing them, categorising them. And what one has done in that case is not actually meet the person at all, but create an image of that person, create an idea of that person, and that is what one is having the relationship with. In other words, you're having a relationship with an idea in your own mind and not with the person themselves. In fact, you're having a relationship with yourself, with a part of your own brain. That is not a true relationship, and that is what Buber said we should always have to avoid when trying to make real relationships with other human beings. Although his ideas about binationalism uh, were not adopted, he was one of the leading intellectuals of the early state of Israel and has certainly become one of the most important thinkers in all of modern philosophy. Thanks for joining.